What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planel, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 100 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250. So do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get right into it. Today we are going to feature Grace DeRocha, a registered dietitian that resides in Detroit, Michigan. Welcome back to the Hot Sauce. Today we have Grace DeRocha, a fellow media spokesperson and a good friend of mine. I'm going to let her introduce herself and tell us about her journey into the profession. I'm going to put her in the hot seat here. There's no hot seat, so go ahead. And you got the floor. Go. Thanks, Angel. So good to be on here with you. Thank you for having me. Um, it's This is a fun, well, this is a lot. The story is a lot. So I... I'm Filipino American. I was born and raised in Michigan. My parents came here from the Philippines. My dad was a doctor. Um, he was a surgeon. He was amazing, super smart, um, obviously a very helpful, kind, loving person. And through his career, he always worked super hard. And he ended up developing type 2 diabetes. And he ended up dying from a stroke when I was 13. That's the sad part right of the story obviously um my dad was wonderful i i still look up to him i know he's like my guardian angel and i say that to say i was supposed to be a doctor my mom would tell everyone that <laughs> um and all of our kids were supposed to be doctors just like my dad so when i was in college i went to michigan state university go green go white um we i was in the pre-med program and i was trying to figure out where I wanted to be in that space, right? And then I took a nutrition class and I learned more about being a dietitian and how I could be helpful to people before they got sick. And this is not, um, no shade to, to sound like my kids and sound super cool, no shade <laughs> on doctors and everything that they do or anyone in the medical profession. But after that class, I knew I wanted to try to help people before they got really sick, before their type 2 diabetes turned into a stroke, and then they lost their lives and left their loved ones. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So yes. you can see it all ties back to like the impact of my childhood, how that felt, what that meant for me, and how I then turned that into my career and profession, but and my passion, right? because right. I had to live through that. And I wanted to make sure that other people could have like the best quality of life and feel empowered in what they do in their day to day with eating and living um, and good nutrition. And so here we are. So that was my, you, I'm 45 years old and my mom will still be like, well, you're so smart. Do you want, are you sure you don't want to take the MCAT? Mom, <laughs> I do not want to take- have that quality of life, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that yeah, that's where it all started. And it's funny because I had never, when I was in before college, I'd never heard of a dietitian before. I didn't really know what it was about until I got to college. I, I, it opened my world to something else. And I felt it. I felt it from that first class. I had a great professor, um, doc, Dr. Hare, shout out. And she, I, I just knew. I, I, I felt like I learned so much. I felt like the way that I also learned once I was in um, the dietetics program felt different. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It felt like I wanted to learn to understand, um, not memorize. It felt like it felt different. You know, I could feel the passion. I felt like I wanted to study. I was excited to absorb and become the sponge to like know the ins and outs so then I could one, be knowledgeable about it, feel educated, and then also turn that around to help people. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, awesome. Yeah. I, I'm glad I didn't cry there. Sometimes oh, I no, feel like I want to cry when you I tell are, that story because <laughs> it's... Yeah, no, no, I, I was going to say, I didn't, I didn't know that about your father. I mean, I knew yeah. a little bit, but I didn't know that. And that definitely uh, can be deep and uh, I could see it could uh, yeah. potentially touch some emotional aspect and make you tear up so good for yeah. you for, for going <laughs> I held through. it together yeah. you held it together well what in terms of your journey like what jobs have you done since yeah. your internship like just tell about that talk about that 
Yeah, so so I said I went to Michigan State. I did. I got two bachelor's degrees there, one in dietetics, one in psychology, um, just because, you know, even now throughout my career, and I, I know you know this too, like the mind and the way we do things and operate when it comes to healthy lifestyle is super impactful and psychology very much ties into that. And I was always interested in that. And then I also did my internship at Michigan State. I was actually, oh gosh, I hate even saying this out loud. I was the first internship class that Michigan State had um, for the dietetics program that just happened. Um, So that's kind of like that. And then I did, I went to grad school and I got an MBA. Um, at Wayne State University in Detroit. I was working for them at the time. When you work there, a lot of universities, I think, will do this. You get to go to school. (laughs) That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's not a bad deal. So then career-wise, gosh, I've had so many jobs. So I've worked in the hospital clinically um, as a dietitian. Super interesting and super different as far as all the different floors that you go on, um, crunching out math for like TPN, PPN, tube feedings, um, things of that nature, which I, I really like math. Um, but I also like the one-on-one personal connection that you get to have. So then as I progressed my career, I think one of my first jobs after working um, at the hospital was working for WIC, which I felt like was interesting because I got to hone on my face-to-face, one-on-one conversations. And there was, you know, with WIC for, uh, it is a supplemental program for women, infant, and children. There is a lot of scope as far as like where the moms are and what they're dealing with. Um, and some were really interested in wanting to learn more and try to really nourish their bodies better. Some were not as interested, but then later became interested. So it was really uh, an interesting and unique experience to dive into those conversations and know that the person that you're talking to either really wanted to learn or you had to get them there. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And you know this, as a dietitian, that's kind of an ongoing saga that we deal with. Um, after that, I was at Wayne State University working. I actually worked in research there. I worked on the Women's Health Initiative, which was a huge research study. Um, and I got to one of the components of the Women's Health Initiative research study was uh, dietary research regarding a low fat um, diet. And to see regarding that, like if they follow this, how their health may have been impacted, whether it, it been um, a focus on cancer and heart health. So it was interesting. It was an interesting thing because we did group classes, we did food and nutrition and cooking type things. We did one-on-one. And it was interesting to think about that you were trying to teach them to do these things for research, for a really big picture of how we were going to look at nutrition for women in the future. So that was kind of cool too. That sounds sounds pretty cool. cool. That sounds pretty cool. That's why (laughs) why it's good to hear these journeys. What else have you done? Um, Oh, so then after that, I worked outpatient at for a company that did a lot of workplace wellness so they would contract with different employer groups and then their employees would come in and we did i did diabetes education um like weight management education and then i got an interesting call so my sister this is really random my sister was a traveling occupational therapist at the time, so she was an OT, she traveled all around, and the agency that she worked for was looking for a dietitian to move to Hawaii for a little bit and cover an extended maternity leave. And I, I did like my job, but um, when I got the call to move to Hawaii, I, I, it was one of those moments in my life, I was so scared, Angel, I was like, what am I doing? I was dating my now husband, And I was about to move from Michigan to Hawaii. I think I moved like in a week. Okay. Was it a three or six month stint? How long was it? uh, It ended up being like eight to nine months. Okay. So eight to nine months you were moving away. Okay. Yes. And there is something about the power of yes in that moment and just, and just diving in. I was scared. I, I was moving to, I moved to Kauai. I moved to an Island where I didn't know one single soul. 
Do you know what I mean? I knew not one yep. person there. And my sister had been doing this traveling OT thing, and she's like, it's cool, they'll put you up in a place, and like for Hawaii, they give, they got me a rental car that I got to use. I, I have a license, I wish I had it with me. I have a Hawaii <laughs> license, like McLovin vibes, but like really yeah, actually yeah, yeah. me with the rainbow and everything. Um, but that was awesome. It was scary. I can't believe I did it. <laughs> I still, when I reflect on it and I say, oh, I lived in Hawaii, aloha. And being Filipino, I, I they, they're like, oh, well, you look like us, but I can tell you're from the mainland. They always called me the mainland girl. Mainland person. Yeah. Yep. Yep. But it was awesome. And I can't, I still, I, I have friends that I met on there that I'm still friends with today. But I went there and I knew not one person. And it was <laughs> scary and awesome. And I worked in the hospital. So I kind of went back to like my hospital clinical roots, which I hadn't done in a little while. Um, I learned how to surf there. So I would serve, I would work super early. I would like start my, like at six and be done like around two or two thirty, And then I would surf with my friends. It was a wild time. <laughs> so I say that to say, say yes. If you feel like it could be an adventure and I knew it was short term too. I knew that I was going to end up coming back home. Right. But I was scared. Poopless. I was. <laughs> All right, so Hawaii, and then what next? What next afterwards? So then it's funny, and I'm still friends with this person now. We actually live in the same neighborhood now. Um, I had a recruiter call me from Blue Cross, and they were just starting to develop their like disease management, wellness, and health coaching program for like the health insurance members. I was a second dietitian they hired, um, and I had put out I think on LinkedIn. This was on LinkedIn. She reached out to me. I kind of thought it was fake. You know, when you, it was like kind of more towards the beginning of LinkedIn. I was like, who is right. this person? And why are they asking me if I want a job? Like, I, it was very, I, I was skeptical, but I knew I was moving home. And so I responded to her and we're still friends. And I worked for Blue Cross for, gosh, there was like a, a chunk. And then I left for a little bit and then I came back. But when I first started working for Blue Cross, it was, telephonically okay. talking to members and again it was disease management health coaching wellness coaching so outpatient type of vibe but what would, I thought was really interesting about this was that I was so used to doing face-to-face -face communication that I had to figure out how can I do how can I connect with someone who can't see me and all they can hear is my voice mm -hmm. so I did some weird things I would tape record myself talking because I wanted to hear what they were hearing. And every time I play back, you know, this being a spokesperson, I'm like, gosh, my voice is so weird or I hate it. Or yeah, I, yeah, um, yeah. But I did that because I needed to know if how I thought I was coming across, I was. So I share that to say, and you know this already, like communication is so important, right? How we sound, if it is face to face, what you look like, what your body language is. But I, need, I needed to figure out how I was going to translate my passion and wanting to help them and educate them, but then also hearing them, right, in the process. So that was a very interesting time. And I learned a lot about myself and communication um, and how I do it and what has worked and what doesn't. Uh, I, also, I also, at that time, the, um, when I worked at Blue Cross, they had Toastmasters. And my leader, she was great. She was like, you should do this. Because I told her how I, I wanted to make sure I was connecting and, and being heard and also hearing and actively listening to them. And, you know, we learned that in school, too, about motivational interviewing yeah. and all of that. But, um, and I was like, what, well, what is Toastmasters? And have you heard of Toastmasters? Yes. Yeah. yeah so, yeah, you know. Yeah. And so for, so for people that don't, Toastmasters is basically a program where you learn how to become a better speaker, I guess is the long and short of it, right? That's a, that's a nice, succinct way to put it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and so it was very interesting and nerve wracking because also it was within the company and there's a range of, you know, levels, like from VPs to peons like me yes. at the every, time, everybody, right? Everybody in between, right. Yeah, and I remember um, one of the second times I went, I had to, they were like, we're going to give you uh, a minute and a half to talk about nail polish and just see what happens. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Why? And there, and it was random subjects. And I was like, 
oh my gosh, what is, what is this? And like in front of, you know, it was a smaller group divided up. And I was like, this is very interesting. I remember I was like, I felt like I'm sweating. And I was like, what am I doing here? What is, why am I talking about nail polish? And I was like so nervous. And they, you know, and it was very interesting to learn about yourself in that capacity too. And I mean, eventually yeah. it helped me become a better spokesperson in general. So did that for Blue Cross for a while and then slowly got into, um, they were starting to build up their social media. And so I became one of the dietitians and like one of the health professionals that worked on the social media team, both like for pro and like program development and product development. And then later on, I did that for a little bit. And then later on, ended up moving fully into the corporate communications team and became the spokesperson for the company. Um, in the okay. health and wellness space. And cool. I did that probably for like 10 ish years. Awesome. Awesome. In between then, there, I worked like in pediatrics and I also worked okay. for the area agency on aging. So I went from um, seniors to babes and I did both of those for about two years only because I started to miss a little bit. I thought communications was cool and I still like it, but I did miss some of that one on one. One on one. Yeah. yeah. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. And is that, is that in your current position now or are you no. doing something different? See, I so love tell it. us about that. Yeah. My current position, I work for this awesome company. They're called Marquee Health. Um, I get to work from home. So I, well, in between there, I've got married. I have two kids, you know, living the dream of that life. Angel knows right, all about right. that. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So I was trying to figure out how can I be my best self for them? as a mom, and then also as my passion for helping people um, in this role as a dietitian. So I get to, I'm a health educator and a health coach. So I do things from um, telephonic and email coaching. So again, this and text coaching a little bit. So we face-to-face, -face, we did phone. Now I'm doing some stuff where they can't hear my voice or see me. So words matter, right? So communicating that to them, on a computer or digitally, it was another step to that evolution of being like the best communicator that I could be in a different way. Um, so I get to do that now. I love it. I own my calendar. I love my people. I'm, um, and it's interesting because I get to cover a wide variety. It's, it's back to some of the workplace wellness type of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's right. employer groups that um, hire our company to do that. But it's everything from nutrition and weight management and fitness to even like helping them feel uh, well, tobacco cessation and sleep and rest and some um, like stress relief type stuff that is within the health coaching realm. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Awesome. It. Well, that that's that's a pretty unique and awesome journey. I mean, the fact that you got to you've done a, a bunch of different things. It's pretty it's pretty fascinating. I mean, that's why I love doing this is because hearing people's journeys, um, you know, we would think that uh, our journey is, um, you know, like the typical journey. But clearly, I don't know, this is I've, I've interviewed your number 10 of the people I've interviewed and, and clearly everyone's coming at it from a different angle. So I love it. So, yeah. Well, so thank you for sharing. So Thanks. next question for you is, you know, you've been doing this uh, media and communications. What do you feel has been the most enlightening and the most humbling aspect of doing media and communications? What would you say? You know, what's interesting is I think I've touched on it. So there's kind of like three parts to this. I've touched on a little bit, like how you look and what you sound like is, is, um, it can be jarring because you think you sound a certain way or look a certain way, or I, I will say, and I, you know, we've seen this before when we do some of our trainings, I'm not tall. I'm five feet. I like to say I'm five one, but I'm five feet and a half, <laughs> um, and so I've had to, like doing news, I've had to stand on boxes before. And when you are doing like a cooking segment, standing on a box, woo, just be it's careful. Be I'm halfway yeah. decent balance. <laughs> but um, so kind of like that awareness factor of what, what you think that you're communicating and what you're saying, especially on live TV is so interesting to me. 
And I think too, I think this is important. And I think this is important, not just with media, but in general, that we still be you, right? Like being who you are is your superpower. And I never growing up saw many Asian people on TV, whether it be news, whether it be TV shows, movies, like uh, some, some stereotypical stuff. Right. But right. I have had people say to me, you know, dietitian students that I've met, like even through social media or different aspects of life or random people on the street. And I will say, it's so cool to see someone that looks like me um, on the news, or it's so cool. I saw your picture and you were quoted in, you know, the newspaper and that makes me tear up. (laughs) Because I think everyone should get to see themselves in a variety of aspects that could feel like their dream. You know what I mean? Right, right. Absolutely. Um, so I will say that. So being short and being on the news and knowing that sometimes you don't know what they're going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You think you know and like you try to set yourself up for success, right? Being prepared has been such a key in all of that too, especially if it's something live, whether it be radio or news. But um, I I have a friend who I, I, we do news all the time and we actually grew up together. We know each other. So every time we go on together, he'll say something like, Grace and I have been known each other for over 25 years. And I'm like, I'm like, Ryan, stop saying that. Yeah, that's right, right. Don't do that. Don't I, but, do cause that. I'm like, cause I'm 26. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, and then he'll bring up something like, do you remember we used to always have like so much candy? And I'm like, this is not the segment we're talking yeah, about yeah, beans yeah, yeah. today yes, or whatever it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So, um, so that's always been fun. And now, you know, after doing it for so long, and I know, you know, this as well, you, you start to know each other. And so there's, you become friends and yes. you, and sometimes they share stories that they know about you and your real life and then kind of puts you on the spot to be like, oh, we're going there today. But yeah, it's a great exactly. way, again, to, a reminder of like to still being used your superpower. So like I feel like as a mom dietitian, it, it can be very relatable. And sometimes I forget that even for myself. So I actually mm-hmm. thank you for that reminder. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. It's always good to hear what people have to say, especially uh, to be in the role because it is uh, very fun uh, and exciting, but there's also the the hard parts, you know, waking yeah. up early, staying up late, or having to kind of stop your life for a second to go do something right. and then come back. So because it so, can yeah. be fast, right? Yes, yes. And it absolutely. is, ex- and I would say to like people that would want to do something like this, like it's not it's not just oh it's fun I get to be on TV or you know be quoted in a thing like you have to do the work. Yeah, you know, you have exactly. to be prepared. Absolutely. absolutely, absolutely. Well, cool. Well, thank you for that. So, the next question for you is, you know, if you could do it all over again in your career, what would you change, and what would you keep the same? And and I will say, I mean, uh, I've asked this question, and everyone's always like, yeah. Some people change. Uh, some people wouldn't change a thing. Their journey's been their own. Some people might be like, I might do this or I might do that. So, what would you say? I would say something that there's not much I would change. <laughs> the one thing that I, my husband and I talk about this all the time. I said, I came back for you, honey. Um, I wish I would have stayed in Hawaii. They offered me a job and I had two classes left in my MBA program that I like hit pause on. And my now husband was there here. And so sometimes I'm like, I wonder what that would have been like if we like would just have gone there and like did the island life (laughs) so that's one thing that I always think about um but honestly I feel like I have loved my career I I feel like I've done a lot of things and there were some times where I took risks to change or like I had a feeling like I had a feeling and sometimes it was spot on and then other times it wasn't but I always learned something you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I always learned whether it was something that I figured out that I liked better or that I, where I wanted to be or like what I was trying to strive for. Um, 
and it's funny too like I actually have a private practice but I don't even I don't really advertise it because I only do probably a handful of people at a time so then people think it's like hard to get in to see me so then they want to see me more which is funny because it, they, they feel like it's exclusive like Grace only takes so many and I'm like that is not the case I just don't have time and you I want to give so much time. Yeah, yeah and I want to give them everything that I can give them um so I, I think it's important for people to kind of dial in to like where they want to be in our dietitian, dietitian, dietetics world and space because there's so many places. And again, I and I do, gosh, I I cannot say this enough. And I say this to my kid, like being you is your superpower. Like, you know, like you don't want to be Grace. I don't need to be Angel. And there's right. space for all of us. You know, it's not pie. Like if you, if 75 million dietitians want to be in private practice, there are a lot of people we can help and serve, you know, or if there are other people that are inspired to be spokespeople, we are such a loving spokesperson family. And there's other ways you could be. I mean, I was a spokesperson for an insurance company for a long time. So right. um, there is definitely so many different avenues to like live your dream that you have envisioned for yourself. And then to also tying into like, the passion point for me, mine is pretty strong. It always has been. I always knew I've always been a helper and a giver, even when I was a kid. Um, so being able to do that and really tap into like the roots and foundation of who I am has helped, even though I've t had a lot of different jobs in my career. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So no. I wouldn't change that much. <laughs> okay, cool. I mean, that's like I said, it's kind of interesting to ask because sometimes it feels like a, a a pointless question because I, I I feel like everyone is outstanding in their own ways yeah. and, and all their journeys are totally unique and and you know the fact that uh, you know due to your family's health issues this is where you are yeah. it's like if your father didn't have these issues what would you be I know, you know? I have thought that too like what if yeah. I took that nutrition class and I was like, oh, this is cool. And then ended up being a doctor. So my mom doesn't have to say, take the MCAT 25 times. Right, right, I will right. also say this too. I've had people ask me this, like interns I've had, or they're like, do you think it's hard to be a mom and have a career? I was like, oh man, how much time do we have? Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the short answer is no. And so I say no only because if you do want to be a mom and you still love being you in your career and you have a passion to do something, you can do it all and like figure it out. You know what I mean? Right, right. I think like if we don't bend, we'll break. So trying to stay flexible with yourself as well and figuring it out, like, you know, no matter what, it's not perfect ever or easy, but like if right. you want to be a mom and still are passionate about living your dreams in your career I think you can do it all I think you do both well I think I think that's where you you have to have a sense of balance and you also have to recognize yeah. that maybe um I guess a lot of us would consider ourselves type a perfectionist so we want to do well at everything yeah. and so instead of getting an a you might get a b I know <laughs> <laughs> everyone's gonna live but you, but you, you end up feeling split. You have this yeah. loyalty of trying to, and then no one's satisfied. So you almost have to like come to an acceptance that like, I'm just trying the best I can in every aspect. Some days I'm, I'm yeah. batting a thousand and some days I'm betting 150, whatever, whatever sport you want to go for. So Yeah, it's true. Right. There cool. was a time when I had my second child, I worked part time and the, and then, and then I was in my own head too. Like, Oh gosh, I feel like I'm part timing everything. Do you know what I mean? Part timing mom life, like yes, yes. part timing work life, and then ended up just being like full time anyways. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So uh, allowing yourself like some of those checks and balances and the exhale in your process right. is important. Absolutely, absolutely. Cool. Well, thank you. Um, next question for you: What does the future hold for you? What would you, what do you what do you think? A nap. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> no, uh, you know what? I, I, feel, it's so, I was just talking about this uh, the other day with someone. I'm like feeling very content. I, I, I a company came to me with a job offer uh, kind of out of the blue and it's a very big job. And I said, no, 
And I was really proud of myself for having the very adult conversation and I still collaborate with them, mm -hmm. but um, just knowing like where I am in my life and space right now is that my kids are 10 and seven. So wanting to make sure I could Uber mom them everywhere they need to go and still right. like get to do work that I'm passionate about. And again, still collaborating with that company, but I was proud of myself for saying no <laughs> in that well, instance. So, I mean, it's good to feel valued. It's good yeah. to feel wanted. And, and it also is good to recognize your limitations. So, yeah. hey, I mean, that's, I was that's very flattered. Thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, absolutely. So I think like just continuing where I'm at right now, and feeling solidified, God, the, that like scheduling as a parent is is a thing for sure. Trying to nail that down, and then also I I figure I'm doing a little bit of time blocking to like be a little bit better about when I start work and I end work, and then staying super focused on my kids and really practicing being present. So I feel like right now I feel like I'm like in a very good place and mm -hmm. where I want to be. But I think in the future, I'd love to continue to be a spokesperson for the Academy. I yeah. do very much enjoy that. I sometimes think I want to grow my private practice more. And I feel like sometimes it's naturally starts to happen. <laughs> um, yeah. But those two things for sure. And then I think making sure that the kids feel whole and making sure like our home life feels whole is important to me. You know, even like real life, like nourishing my family and like meal planning is important. So uh, thank you for that previous answer. Any words of wisdom for the next generation of dietitians? What would you have to say? I've said it a couple of times. And I'll say it again. Being you is your superpower. So don't forget to like be tuned into that, you know, tune into like how you connect, how you communicate who you are and what you bring to the table. Um, I can't express that enough. I think it makes you so much more relatable as a human and as a dietitian. Um, because we all eat, right? We all eat and we all want to nourish our bodies. So to be able to remind whoever you're speaking with, whether it be an audience of people or one-on-one, -on -one, that you are also a human being that cares and wants to help. And then also not hide, like, gosh, growing up and you know, like being Filipino American, I, well, people didn't really know who, what Filipinos were actually. At the, they were like, are you Chinese or Japanese? And then, and I would always say, I know I'm Filipino. And then I'd have to explain, but like yeah. reminding yourself of who you are, whatever that is, whether that be, you know, race, ethnicity, being a woman, being a man, being from Michigan, um, tuning into who you are and using that to help you effectively in your career, I think is so important. I greatly respect that. And I think that, I think people are looking for people that are authentic mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing It's like, most people know me and I'm the guy and it's really easy to find me because I'm the ball tan guy running around the conference center. And, the but, best. but in general, I love having a good time and I, I think um, I, I was I was joking. I was talking with somebody the other day. I was like, you know, like the like I think this and all the things I do. I'm trying to get people to see the world through my eyes, and yeah. everything's beautiful. And you know, I could look at a piece of dog crap on the ground and be like, that's the most beautiful thing in the world. Like, look, it's heart shaped <laughs> or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, the sun hits it in a certain angle. I was like, yeah. oh my god, the heart. You know, yeah, or so. like, oh, there's glitter in that poop. Look yeah, at that. Exactly. Yeah. I, like, oh, I love a yeah. silver lining. I love, I know, yeah. I love that about you. I love, yeah. I feel like you have such a great positive energy and like yeah. it radiates off of you. Yeah. And yeah. it makes fe people feel happier and brighter too. Like, I yes. love that. Yeah. 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 So. so cool. Well, I greatly appreciate your time. Thank you so much for jumping on with us today. I'm also on the platform Buy Me A Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the uh, 
individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.